Hey, how you doing? It's Emilio here. A little while ago, I reviewed this thing. This is called a Zimmer board, and it's just like a big old heatsink with a whole bunch of ports, and it looks incredible. Well, now I've got myself one of these. This is called a Zimmer Blade. Old, new, well, sort of. They're both still available on the Zimmer website. And these things are being advertised as a server, ultimately a small palm-sized server. This thing looks incredible. And what's awesome about this is there are ports absolutely everywhere. You can run your PCI Express, you can run a whole bunch of hard drives, connecting the hard drives over SATA to the outside of the actual unit. And the nice thing about this is you can set this up as a NAS. If you wanna play around with true NAS, free NAS, you can do that. You can run server software onto this. It comes bundled with Linux. It's got the distribution CASA OS, essentially the front face of the backend Linux platform. It's pretty cool. Now, it is not like your big servers that you may find in the corporate world. It's not gonna be anywhere near that powerful. And that's fine because this is aimed at the home user. It's aimed at the home lab environment, even maybe a test demo environment in a workplace. That's really where they're trying to aim this thing. Before we do get into this video, please do remember to click on that subscription button, click on the bell. My name is Emilio. I release videos on all things tech. And hey, if you like this channel, support me by clicking on the subscription button and on the bell. If you wanna learn more about technology, I've got a whole bunch of training courses available on all things tech. If you wanna know more about servers, more about storage, whole bunch more, go and check out the link down below. You're definitely gonna find them helpful and you'll become a better tech for it. All right, let's talk about the specs of this thing. First things first, it has got a Celeron Apollo Lake processor. Now don't let the Celeron name make you go, oh, it's Celeron, they're not very good. Hey, you know what? This is pretty impressive. Comes to two to four cores. We've got a USB-C, which also allows you to power the unit. We've got a USB-A, USB 3s for both of them. We've got a mini display port on this unit. And in my box, I actually got a HDMI adapter so I can run into a super big, awesome screen and get some incredible quality out of that. We've got a gigabit ethernet where you can run in your blue cable to get some network connectivity and then a PCI Express. And look at this, this thing allows you to attach a whole range of PCI Express cards. So you can essentially run in your graphics cards, your network cards, all of those things, and even additional hard drives if you want to, like SSDs. And then what are these other ports that you ask? Well, these are ports for SATA hard drives. So what I actually got in my box, in my little pack, I got an enclosure where I can actually run external hard drives, like normal SATA hard drives. I've got the cables and I'm gonna go and plug those in to my hard drives and then plug them into the actual computer itself. And it's gonna power those hard drives. And I've got a couple of those that I can run six gigabits per second. They can also be SSDs if you want to. The USB-C port on there can also allow me to do power, a display, and also data transfers. I can actually run a display over my USB-C. So to get the thing working, we're gonna plug in our blue network cable. We're gonna plug in our power into the USB-C. Came with a number of different adapters, including Australia, if you can tell from my dodgy accent. And then we're gonna log in. Now go on to the website to open up our CASA OS. We just do a simple setup of an account, a username and a password. Got ourselves a little bit of storage. You can see a system status around the CPU and the RAM that is installed. Out of the box, it's got the files app where I can see and store some files. If you've got an external hard drive, you'll be able to access that as well and plug in a whole bunch of other data. And in the app store, look at that, a beautiful app store where you can go and download to your heart's delight a whole bunch of stuff. You've got your chat GPT stuff. If you wanna play a little bit more with AI, there's also the mid journey stuff, which is AI related. Cloudflare, part of Cloudflare, which is around DDoS protection of your websites. One that I'm gonna show you is the Home Assistant, which I love. We'll come back to that in a little while. Hey, you like Minecraft? Why don't you try the Mine OS so you can actually get the Minecraft server management and essentially run the Minecraft server directly on this computer. It is pretty cool. And then another one that we're going to be showing you a little bit on and I tried is Pi Hole. 
This is awesome. It, as the name suggests, Pi can also run on a Raspberry Pi. We've got it running here on this computer and this essentially does ad blocking. Twingate, this is brilliant. Uh, if you don't want to use a VPN, you want to use Twingate. I've got a full video on how to set up Twingate. You can go check that out. So the two that I'm experimenting with right now are Home Assistant, Pi Hole. Home Assistant, this thing is brilliant. Let it go and scan your network and find a whole bunch of stuff. I've got my Apple TVs listed in here, so I can now control my Apple TVs. Not like a remote, but I can actually go specifically into all of the apps that I've got running on here. Click on, you know, like Netflix directly. Click, it opens up Netflix, it starts playing it. And I've got full access now, essentially to the back end of my Apple TVs. I've got my NAS, I can see information about my NAS, so it shows me a little bit of monitoring stuff. Under the setting spot, you see that there's a whole bunch of other things available to you over here. It discovers a whole bunch of stuff. I've got my lights. I can control my lights. I can do scheduling. I can do all of these incredible things. Potentially, I can go into add integration. And here I've got all of these other things available for me to go and download, including Amazon. So if you've got, if you're using your Alexa stuff, if you've got you know, Google, Apple things, you can fully have integration into here. And the Home Assistant can act as your main assistant for managing absolutely everything. It's really cool. It's got an app as well on your phone, which you can go ahead and install. And that's what I used on this device. And then the other one over here, essentially it's a powerful network wide ad blocker that runs on this incredible computer. It doesn't just block ads in your browser. It also blocks ads against every device on your network, which is what I love. Now I'm going to spend a bit of time going and setting this up and configuring it later on. And we'll have a whole other dedicated video on working it. But think about your smart TVs, your phones, IOT gadgets in your house. Setting it up was pretty straightforward. Just go and install it, get it up and running and then you manage it through this basic, simple web interface. I love it. And you can easily monitor all network activity. You can do customized block lists. You can even get detailed stats on what's being blocked. And the great thing is that because it is open source, it's completely for free. You can tweak it, you can do whatever you want. And there's a huge community available as well if you wanna learn a little bit more about Pi Hole. And here we got the device all set up, tucked away there amongst all of my other little fleet of mini computers. Uh, you can sort of see it right at the very top, but this is where it's sitting within my home lab. And of course, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and route all my network traffic through this so that I can take advantage of Pi Hole and then get all my ads blocked up. Very very, very cool. Here it is again, the Zimmer Blade. I've got a link to it down below. If you wanna go and pick one of these things up, you can check it out down below. Go and grab it. They are amazing and they're pretty cheap and they're pretty powerful for the size. I mean, amazing. I love these things. They're just getting smaller and smaller every single day. As I mentioned at the very start of the video, if you wanna learn more about tech, go check out some of my training courses on lots of technology topics. I've got links to them in this video as well. And also, a lot of you are not subscribed. Would love it if you subscribe. It helps me out, helps me know that you are valuing the content that we are releasing. So, so please do the subscription button, click on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. And until next time, keep playing with your tech stuff and we'll see you then.